This is a 1973-74 RCA KCS-168 uh, XA chassis. And this is just your average kind of low-end, mid-1970s portable when tubes are being phased out, but it's still tubes. And I have a fetish for corny, stupid advertising lingo that really is all about polishing a turd. And I think this one really kind of takes it. RCA was known for stupid trade names for their sets. I mean, outrageous. Oh, I have the Boutique Series, you know, or, or the Kingdom Series, or whatever kind of stupid names they, they gave these. And you only see the trade name if you have the factory RCA manual. And I have it here, and I just wanted to share. Share, that's a big thing today. And today's social media driven society so this is what they call the finish on this stripped walnut hot stamp with dark platinum mist dark platinum mist now just keep that in mind as we work on this turd or you had your choice of rosewood hot stamp with dark platinum mist. See here? And I will give these factory manuals props. They do have uh, details that the SAMs don't. But I'm used to the SAMs format so we'll probably um, use the SAMS photo fact. And the other thing that's nice about these is that the numbers, the numbers, the component designating numbers that are on the schematic actually line up with the, uh, what's printed on the circuit board. So that's kind of nice. Let's do a quick refresher on Rosewood Hot Stamp Dark Platinum Mist. This is a desert set. It's full of mud, sitting in water. Uh, I went through these in a previous video. A lot of them, I had like four or five of them. They're still around here somewhere. A lot of them had bad yokes. The horizontal winding and the yokes were shorted and it wouldn't develop high voltage. This one was not developing high voltage and I did a ring test on the yoke and the yoke ring ringed out okay. What I want to do in this video is a quick diagnose. So let me try and explain that little uh, uh, brain failure right there. See what happens is when you're doing a YouTube video and you look over and you notice this right here. Um, your brain tends to misfire a little bit. So back to the uh, Mr. Platinum Mist. What I want to do is a quick diagnosis of the horizontal high voltage circuit and just figure out why it's not working. Is it the flyback? Is it the horizontal oscillator? Let's go through how to diagnose a horizontal output after I clean up this gift that the cat left me. All right, so let's get into this and try and diagnose it. Now you can see the water line here where this was basically sitting in a flash flood zone, but we don't care about that. Uh, all we want to do is diagnose why there's no high voltage and hopefully get it working. If not, if it's the flyback or something, at least we have a diagnosis. My goal with these videos is to, to kind of educate people who have these old TVs on how to go about diagnosing them and hopefully being able to recap and fix them and maintain them themselves. In a previous video I resurrected a 1962 Panasonic black and white which was one of the very first Japanese imports uh, and this this is one of the very last um, tube 
black and whites and the complexity of the Panasonic was ten times this. This is completely the opposite. This is as minimalized uh, as as possible. This is almost like something months would build where they just tried to engineer uh, as many parts out of it as possible. I mean the simplicity of this thing, I mean just look at the simplicity of that. Here's a couple comparisons. Here's the horizontal output section of the RCA. Here's the horizontal output section of the Panasonic. Here's the power supply and filaments of the RCA. Here's the power supply and filaments of the Panasonic. Panasonic, RCA. All right, here we go, high voltage gauge. Now, in the previous video, I did the ring test on uh, the yoke, and it rang out good, so. All right, take two, right TV this time. Should be warming up. All right, I reset the power switch. No, it's filaments are coming up. see our horizontal output damper tube glowing and yeah no no high voltage and you, you don't want to run this too long like this because it'll I'm trying to see if the tube is getting warm Usually if the horizontal output circuit's not working right, it will burn the tube up in short order. I kind of like the cushioning effect of those spider webs. I think I'll leave them in there for a while. All right, let's do some basic DC voltage checks. All right, now you don't want to measure the ones that say do not measure unless you have a sacrificial meter, which we might end up going that route. So we can measure pin two. So our B plus comes in here uh, through the choke, then to pin two. We'll start there. Measuring pin two, we have 136 volts. So we can't really measure pin four with this meter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna measure pin nine and pin 11. I'm interested in pin nine because if that one's not negative, if it's not in a negative voltage, then most likely our oscillator back here is not running. So let's check pin 9. I'm on pin 9. And there it just went negative. It's not negative. It should be negative 25, but at least it's negative. I could try adjusting the horizontal hold control. And yes, that's changing it, so turning the horizontal hold control, that indicates at least the oscillator is running. Now I'm checking pin 11, which is a screen. And we do have voltage there. As you can see, pin 11 right there. So all of our voltages look to be on the horizontal output tube. Now usually the next thing I'd like to check is either the plate current or the cathode current. But since it's not easy to break into that on this tube, what I want to do is I want to check the boost voltage. And the boost voltage is right here, 420 volts. Basically what, what they use that for in this set is they bring it up here to the... Uh, audio detector and I believe the reason why they do that they power the audio detector off of the boost voltage so if the high voltage fails if the horizontal output fails that the user wouldn't just sit there and use it to listen to the their TV show so basically when the picture goes out so does the sound to prevent them from running it without the horizontal working and if I'm connected to the right place, we got 41 volts on the boost. 
just start making an interesting squealing sound. All right, if you don't have this, then don't worry about this. I'm doing a ring test between pins four and five on the flyback, and it's ringing. And there's pins four and five. That's the one that goes to the plate and the one that goes to the damper. Okay, well, according to this, it's working. It's not shorted. Uh, this actually drives the... Uh, it drives the, and it's really made, this is really made for solid state stuff, but it actually will drive the horizontal output just like the tube does. And if something was wrong, it would show a short, and it's not. So it's ringing okay. It's just not developing any high voltage. And uh, these problems can be very tough to diagnose. Now I think the next step is to very carefully vacuum slurp all of these spiders out of here. You can see there's a, there was a big one in here somewhere. Anyway, kind of let's get the vacuum out and gently slurp these spiders out and then uh, maybe test the tube. Alright, well, since we have that other TV that I started with, I just pulled the tube out of it, stuck it in here, and no, still no high voltage and squealing super loud. So it's not the tube. Alright, next thing, could the high voltage rectifier this thing be a problem? I pulled it out. Should get about a half inch or an inch arc out of here, and I'm barely nothing, getting nothing. There's a little something there, but not much. That's arcing. Why is there zero high voltage, though? with that. I mean that's at least a couple thousand volts there. That's at least a couple thousand volts. Why is there nothing getting through this rectifier? What's going on here? Well this is interesting. There's um, with it disconnected from the CRT getting about five kilovolts through it and check this out so this is where I'm kind of playing with the danger zone and um, you don't necessarily need to do this It's almost like the CRT is shorted. So you can adjust that frequency with this. So let me see if I can demonstrate this. And, and a lot of people are paranoid, you know, that this voltage can kill you and all that. And it might if you have a heart condition, but I'll tell you this. It's a lot less lethal and hurts a lot less than a high energy ignition on a modern car. Um, so, let's see if I can get this all in frame here. So if I connect it here, I'm getting about eight kilovolts. And as soon as I touch it to the CRT, it goes to zero. That's lifting it off the CRT. That's touching it to the CRT. It's almost like the CRT is shorted. All right, I cleaned that off, which didn't make any difference. And if I pull the socket off the CRT, the voltage comes up. 
So it's either shorted internally somehow or it's just being overdriven and there's not enough current being supplied through the high voltage to drive the tube, which I could see it loading it down a little bit, but completely like shorting it to ground. So let me think about the next step here. All right, what I've done now is I put, because this is a series string set, I put a jumper to bypass the filament uh, in the picture tube. That way the rest of the set would continue to run. And you can see with that, with that socket off there, we have nine kilovolts. I'm curious to see if one of these pins, is this just a, I'm just probing the pins, is this just a lack of, a lack of capacity on the high voltage, or what is this? Is the frequency just off and it, So what I'm saying, is this a bad picture tube, or is this just, am I getting lost in my diagnosis here? Am I getting lost in the troubleshooting? Am I following a problem that doesn't exist because there's another problem causing it? All right, so what is doing this? When I connect the cap here, the socket onto the CRT, when the CRT warms up, it pulls the high voltage to zero. And it does not appear to be a short inside the CRT. So what would cause that? Um, well, I think we have two problems here. Maybe the CRT is over-biased. It's being turned on too hard. And the frequency is off for some reason on the horizontal oscillator I mean we can hear it and for these things to work right you know it sounds like it's about six kilohertz it needs to be up at 15 or 14 point whatever so the next thing I want to do is I want to check this the cathode here pin 2 which is always the yellow wire I want to see what the voltage is here because if that gets pulled to ground that will turn the tube on a hundred percent and if you turn the tube on a hundred percent that might if the tube is in really good shape that might be enough with the horizontal oscillator off frequency that might be enough to pull so many electrons to the front from here that it um, just effectively kills the high voltage. That's an interesting problem. So let's check this. Is that pin 2 or pin 7? I guess it's pin 7. So this is our yellow wire. This is our cathode. And I am measuring the resistance between the cathode to ground. And look at this. I got 9.8 ohms. Which would mean that the airplane in the sky that would mean that the cathode being grounded or being zero volts, essentially, that would mean that the tube is turned on 100%. And like full brightness beyond full brightness. So if you take a look at the schematic here, or pin seven, I'm sorry, pin seven, it's supposed to be 99 volts. That comes back to our brightness control, and you can see the brightness is turned up as you pull that closer to ground. So as you lower the voltage on that, you would turn it on more and make it brighter. Well, it's they have a 270K in there, so that limits how far down you can pull that. Well. It's pulled down to 10 ohms, and watch this. If I pull the cap off of here, it goes up to 0.9 meg, 900K. So 
it must be shorted inside the CRT. And the CRT is shorted internally from the heater to the cathode. I'm gonna wrap on it here a little bit. It's a temporary solution for a bad problem. And now I've got the TV fired up and I'm measuring the voltage on the yellow cathode. And as soon as the filament heated up, it um, it just shorted again. So let me tap on it. And you know, I'll admit, when I tested this CRT, I think I probably tested it with the Beltron, which doesn't show shorts. All right, I have it hooked up to a airplane in the sky. Let's try that again. I have it hooked up to a real tube tester now that checks everything. And this is a BNK 467. And you can see here that it is showing the shorts so and I don't see a I see a remove shorts G1 to K shorts I don't know if you can remove a cathode to filament short because you run the risk of blowing the filament open I mean it's the CRT is done it's it's bad there's no uh, so yeah, see if I tap on the CRT, the short goes away. So it's... It's not even like a whisker or something that you could blow out. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a hard short. Some just two things are touching. Maybe if you dropped it, it would fix it. So what's going on here is you can see the heating element there, those two wires with that white coating, and that coating is an insulating material. And you can see how that it's coiled up, and that's the heater, that's what's glowing. And that tube right there that it's in is the cathode. And you can see the wire that goes to the cathode there. It's a little lead that's looped around and connected to that tube. And that tube is actually where the picture information goes into. And that tube is... That tube is conducting with the filament. So it's a breach in that white insulating material on those wires that are glowing red. Now, something I just thought of is that I've heard of people using like a brightener, a, a, an isolating brightener to basically isolate and let the heater float uh, at cathode voltage. We might be able to do that, but is this TV worth it? If I pound on it to where the short goes away, look at the emissions. The emissions are fantastic. The tube is like brand new. Um, the emissions are just excellent. And look at the amount of cutoff I have here. It's just incredible. So the other problem is, assuming we could use an isolation transformer and just let the filament float, um, you know, do whatever it wanted. The other problem we have is the horizontal frequency is way off. Way off, it's way low. And I was looking at how the components are all buried in dirt here. I wonder if all of this dirt is what's causing that horizontal frequency to be off. The reason the horizontal frequency was so far off is because I had in playing with it, I had backed the core way out of the horizontal hold control 
to the point where it was almost out. So I tried cleaning the circuit board off thinking the dirt was affecting it and it wasn't. The dirt was having no effect. It's just I had backed the slug out of the core too far. That's why the horizontal was squealing. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I got a couple brighteners and I, I, I think that this one's the best one to sacrifice. What I plan on doing is, you can see they have this here wired in uh, auto transformer mode, meaning they're using one winding common, so it's not isolating, it's just one continuous winding that's maybe adding a volt or so to the uh, the filament voltage, and this is a, a view bright manufactured in USA picture to brightener. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the brown wire, and I'm going to remove the black wire, and I'm going to connect them to this 6.3 volt one amp transformer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder that the wire going to the black back to the wire to the brown so it's just acting like a short almost and um, it'll be like shorting these two leads together this because this is a series string set and then we will connect this and we'll see how it isolates um, you know that will isolate the yellow wire the cathode of the picture tube from the filament string but my question is, will the video information that's being fed in on the yellow wire, will it couple backwards through the transformer and get shunted off somehow? So this is a real experiment. I don't know the answer to it. Is it going to give us some kind of weird um, buzzing? or I don't know. I could swear I'd heard or read about this being done, but I don't remember the details of it. And uh, it's not something you're going to really find anymore. So with this little transformer here backfed and shorted, I'm only getting 380 millivolt drop across it. That's pretty good. It would have been nice to get more like 3 volts. That way um, it wouldn't be pushing the rest of the tubes quite so hard but we're not going to worry about that and then I got my uh, filament transformer here connected to my black and brown so let's give the filament transformer 110 volts and see what it does alright so what I've done here I should probably almost draw a schematic of this I have replaced I have removed the CRT from the series string filament and connected it to its own separate 6.3 volt filament transformer. You can see how I have the filament transformer connected to the AC line there. And we actually have a picture with static. And the, it, it, it shrunk. It, there's a gap on both sides here, like the horizontal output tube is bad. So what I did is I grabbed a, well, 38HE7. I think it's the same as a 38HK7, but look at this. More of this stupid advertising lingo. Admiral Supertron tube. I only use Admiral Supertron tubes in my television set because a Supertron tube means I'm a real man. Oh yeah, I put the new Supertron in there and it's got full width and it's really bright. This is taking a look at the DC potential between the chassis and one of the filament leads. And you can see it's kind of bouncing all over the place as the CRT shorts and But anyway, adjusting the brightness here, you can see that that adjusts that voltage. But yeah, it's just it's all over the place with the look at 85 volts with the CRT shorting and and that on the inside. It's just all over the place. So that's what we're isolating off with that transformer. 
and I can actually see a difference in the contrast of the static snow when it shorts and when it's not shorted. So we'll see that when I put the generator on it. We'll see. So some of the some of the video information is bleeding off backwards to the transformer. Well, look at that. You wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. And I'm not sure how it's well it's uh, showing up because the um, sun is still kind of bright out here. try something. I want to tap on the CRT and I want to see what the um, difference is. Oh. Okay, that's not shorted. That's shorted. So when the circle is bright, it's not shorted. shorted right there it's 13 volts and when it's right there when it goes away it's 83 volts and so this might be a little bit more visually visually descriptive so you see the needle right here so look at the circle the definition of the circle Watch the needle. See how the voltage dropped way down? Watch the circle and the meter. unshorted. It's doing it by itself. I gotta say it's an absolutely gorgeous picture. It's a gorgeous image. Uh, when the CRT is not shorted, it's bright and clear and um, nice circle there. It looks really good. Get the converter box on it. Watch some TV, man. Denture stains? Try Efferdent. Efferdent's oxy-action attacks stains even in between for a complete clean. That's the Efferdent effect. So many children urgently need your help. It's more vital than ever that caring people like you call USA for UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, and give $21 a month, just 70 cents a day, children have lost everything when they have nowhere else to go no home unhcr protects them please help refugee children now we come to the propaganda point of our television repair today. program and we need your support today to help keep children alive keep them safe and reunite vulnerable terrified lost children with their parents Bake cheese burger cheese so, again, I'll talk about how this line up here and at the bottom, it's NTSC widescreen, 16 by 9. Got a great photo or video? We may use your post Pretty much all you can do now uh, is the news or commercials or else you get copyright. So you'll see the um, you'll see the CRT shorting. Outdated state of emergency as the Transkin fire spreads to 7,500 acres tonight. New evacuations are underway. The man wanted for murder in New York has been caught in Los Angeles. Police found him with another potential victim. And a little boy wished for a little sibling, and through tragedy and heartbreak, a miracle happened and made all of his dreams come true. 
Hi, Bob. I'm Susie Scott. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Jeff Vaughn. We begin with breaking news. The Cranston fire near Idlewild. Now it doesn't want to shore. Forced new evacuations. It affects folks in Fern Valley, Pine Cove, Cedar Glen, and the Garner Valley area. Thousands of people right now evacuated all around Idlewild and nearby communities. Well, the governor now has declared a state of emergency. At least five homes have been destroyed. The fire has grown to 7,500 <laughs> <Come on>. acres, <laughs> and it's still only 5% contained tonight. As Jim Adela's live in Sky 9 with a look at the fire and where it stands tonight, Well, this is one of the hot spots out here. 7,500 acres is what they're saying. We heard earlier, earlier on that the Forest Service actually had a plane up here. They said those numbers might be changing soon. They from the Cranston fire continue to grow. There you go. In their They're structure. shorted. Okay. See how the text That's is all blurry? New mandatory evacuation. Here. Raging flames still burning strong along both sides of Highway 74. Okay, look at the like cake house symbol there. Like See how it's all blurry? So there it just cleared up. 500 acre and growing Cranston fire forcing another They're shorted again. Evacuation and a state of emergency in Riverside County. Like my house was going to burn down. Evacuated They're cleared up. Angel and his mom, Vilma, nervously waited at a shelter in Banning to find out if their homes made it through the second day of this firefight. So there you go. Uh, there, see, there it's clearing up There's and shorting. Firefighters continued to put out the flames still burning inside their destroyed homes. It blew up uh, earlier today, right around there. They're shorted. So right behind us, and you can see the southern ridge there. It's making a strong run to the south. The flames moving towards Lake Hemet and Mountain Center forced Cal Fire to order new mandatory evacuations. The Pine Cove... Cedar so they're shorting, the clearing out. Tramway. So the there's no... ...from all over the state uh, are headed here. You know, there's no real fix for this. I mean, I, I isolated it off. Last night, I but obviously the video information is leaking backwards through that transformer, you know, and becoming distorted. So, I mean, there's no fix for this, but at least we did diagnose the problem to a bad CRT. I guess the... at those flames right now, Cal Fire says there are homes scattered throughout that area not too far away, but they say they are trying their best to make... You know, the lesson here is um, the lesson here is use use a good CRT tester when you check all this stuff. I mean, the Beltron. A lot of people swear by the Beltron, but the Beltron doesn't show shorts. It just shows a mission. And as far as you know, a good a good tester, you need a good tester that basically shows everything. And then again, you get these random intermittent shorts like this. What if I tested it and it just wasn't shorted at the moment that I tested it? So that's why you need to be able to diagnose this stuff. Anyway, kind of sad because it's uh, it could be all cleaned up and and you know I don't know who would use it, but it could all be cleaned up. But you know it's with the with that problem right there, it's you know. You know, it's it, it, it ain't no good. So I had some other ones of these that had bad yolks. So maybe the yolk from this one will go into one of the other ones. I just don't think these Taiwanese made RCAs. I don't think the quality, it, it, they just didn't, the quality was just left out, you know. With the new horizontal output tube and the cathode, CRT cathode isolated, our high voltage is now about 15 kilovolts. And this is a sure sign of a weak horizontal output tube when you have lack of horizontal deflection on the side, the left and right. There's taking a look at the video IF on the RCA with the bad CRT. Uh, it's a little bit off, but it's acceptable. That's going through the tuner on channel 4, just uh, kind of a rough look at it. Not too bad. Alright, so here's a new toy I got, new diagnostic toy. This is uh, FLIR Infrared. And this will really help with um, some diagnostic stuff, you know, when I get a resistor that's smoking but I can't identify it. 
or if I have a shorted yoke I'll be able to see what coils hotter so anyway we can see that the the horizontal output tube is the hottest thing and then the vertical output tube of course those are the majority of energy wattage being used and you can actually see the hot spots in the tubes on the vertical output tube you can see well the Two images aren't overlaid quite right, are they? Yeah, the thermal image and the um, regular image are a bit off. Wow, see that resistor there that's real hot? There's a resistor between those two tubes. It's real hot. Some other resistors towards the back that are pretty warm. I think this one right here. That one's pretty warm. Anyway, this will be a diagnostic aid that I'll be using when working on some of these sets. So I don't know if it's recording this, but you can see right in the middle the temperature of that resistor. 280 degrees Fahrenheit. About this resistor right here 144 degrees for that resistor <laughs> 